All right, everybody, we're on the air. Watch, watch what we say now. <laughs> of course, we can edit it out. This is when I get crazy, Meryl. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to be popping some words, and Jeremy's going to go, what? <laughs> okay, um, everybody's got the agenda. It's actually pretty simple uh, tonight. Uh, we're going to, we do our, start off with our normal question of, does anybody have anything hot that, well, we got some, some good heads here that help solve a problem? And if not, we'll just go on into the agenda. Um, so tonight we're going to, Steve's going to do his uh, ASI air uh, presentation. And, and then we're going to talk about future meetings um, for, well, December and on. In fact, while I'm, while I'm on December, December is a crazy busy month for most people. Do we want to just skip December and get in and just go and pick it back up in January or do they have an opinion on that? Yeah, that's what we did yeah. last year. Did we? I don't, I didn't remember. What we did. Uh, Good. I mean, if you do in December, it has to be early, like well, mid, no. mid, mid to late. It's yeah. bad. The normal date would be the 16th, I believe, or yeah, I, I don't no, think that's 15 or 16. But okay, well, we'll we'll just uh, pick it up in uh, in January then. So okay, Steve, um, you're up. All right, I'm gonna share my screen. Okay, can, can everybody see that clearly? The screen. Yes. Yes. All right. Get some stuff out of the way. All right. I jokingly call this presentation the state of the ASI air address because of the, you know, the presidents do their state of the union address every year. <laughs> and, and this uh, this product changes so much and there's so much going on with it. Uh, there's two major updates uh, every year. It's quite hardware and software. So I think, you know, something's going to happen. We need to come back to this topic. And now I'm going to, oops, my arrow, my arrow button wasn't working. There we go. All right. So we're at four generations. This first one uh, had a 0.4 degree to 30 degree field of view, and it, it couldn't pit plate solve beyond that. They improve the field of view the next three generations. So uh, the second, can you see my arrow? Oh yeah. I'm, okay, good. The second generation uh, didn't have the antenna, but it had Wi-Fi capabilities. This third generation is the current flagship. It's the best one, uh, and it has it's much faster and uh, it has uh, better power management. It even tells you how many watts you're outputting and helpful things uh, uh, as you're taking pictures. They have a new one that I have side by side with this current one to show you how small it's starting to get. And this new one uh, is not nearly as powerful as these two, but it's more powerful than this one. It's entry level. And, uh, and I, I don't even know, I, I wouldn't recommend this one at all. It doesn't have uh, ethernet capabilities for faster transfer. So it's not spectacular. Uh, flagship ASI Air Plus is the way to go. Steve, before you get leave that page, sure. I mean, I, I know zero about this. So do, does who makes it and what's the purpose of it? And, okay. I mean, good, good. great questions. And I, I love uh, uh, that this is supposed to be discussion. Yes. So uh, the company <laughs> who makes this is a Chinese company called Zoe, and they started out making cameras based on Sony chips. Hello. And now they, they're just kind of expanding out to, uh, uh, to a device that controls them. And they're, the purpose of the device is to throw away laptops. This is like designed to be a all encompassing device that will, uh, you can literally control from your phone. And, uh, uh, so it's it is a uh, somebody's got the, needs to mute their is it okay. Dan and Jan maybe yeah. that's all right oh well 
So uh, it's really uh, uh, nobody's done this. You know, all the great telescope companies, they, 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 there's no, no mobile solution. And these these people were out of the box doing it. So it was a really good idea because you can transport it to dark wow. skin sites like Burton Sugar Farm. And uh, uh, you don't need a lug laptop. You don't have to worry about powering up a laptop. Uh, you can do everything on your phone. Okay, the other question on you talk about the field of view. I understand what field of view when you look at an image. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Why does uh, why does that differ? I mean, uh, does it make a difference what the camera you use or the scope you use or it, it's it's the camera it's the camera and the scope together is what dictates what the field of view is. So your your field of view will uh, okay. in, uh, be bigger than like. 0.2 degrees, even if you have like a, a big, you know, 10 inch scope, if you have a bigger chip. Gotcha. So if you're, if you're doing a full frame chip, you can probably get by with uh, the plate solve capabilities of the ASI air. But if you're like, say you have a 10 inch Bye -bye. long, long focal length, then uh, you, uh, you, you, you cannot, you, you might not be able to plate solve. Uh, if you have like a, a ASPC, ch you know, chip with a, the half size 35 millimeter. So okay. the two are combined together to, to, to make up this. Okay, that's helpful. And moving from point four to point two was a big, big deal for the people who had more uh, vocal length. Uh, they were able to resolve some stuff that they couldn't. Okay. Uh -huh. <laughs> Would you, would you mute mute your system, Dan or Jan or whoever it is? Okay. Oh, okay. yeah. Thank, thank you. There was some noise in the background. We're okay. Um, Steve, there you go. Yes. I have a, I have a question. How sure. is um, ASI Air different from the um, Eagle, the Prime News Lab Eagle? Uh, I'm afraid I'm not familiar with that kind of law. Were they like, have they, are they a mobile solution? I think so, but I've seen somewhere like about them, read, read about it, but not sure. Those are, I think, expensive, like $1,000 or something plus. Yeah, and the beauty of the ASI Air is you can buy it on cloudy nights for under 200 bucks now. Oh, okay. A lot of, uh, and uh, if you're buying it new, it's, it's under 300 for the flagship. That's so, so pricing would probably be one of the advantages, uh, and they're they're really aggressive that way. Uh, the uh, their focusers, like they sell a focuser, and that tends to be less expensive than your typical focusers. Their cameras, you know, they got some very high end cameras that are very expensive, but they also have lower end cameras to help you know people get into this hobby. Uh, uh, so they 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 have a, a wide range, and uh, they're doing a really good job. Uh, they're other than your camera being messed up and sent back to the factory. <laughs> How's that coming, by the way? Um, I, I got a new camera. Uh, they did a replacement. Okay, wow. Yeah, they're like, you need to uh, show a proof of invoice. If you show that, they do a replacement. Uh, if you cannot show the invoice, then they do a repair. Okay. Yeah. yeah excellent. So uh, getting back to this, and, and please feel free to ask any questions as I move along, uh, because I, I have quite a few slides here, and uh, I don't have to go through every one. I, I, my, my intent here is not to teach you how to use it, but just to give an overall feel of the, the, what you can do with it. And uh, I think the best way to do that is I'm going to show you some settings, some pictures of some settings. Uh, but what I like about it is with a laptop, that thing needs to be still hooked up. Uh, constantly the whole time with ASI air it is it's a computer and your your phone is your monitor so it would literally you, you set it up maybe the first 15 minutes of the session and you have your plans you have all your you got five hours of shot set up in a matter of like 10 to 15 minutes you got it guiding and you got it uh, plate solved and then the, the phone doesn't have to touch it the rest of the night it's all automated uh, here's the uh, back end. It shows the Wi-Fi and the power switch. And power. Here's a here's a uh, a tip. When you turn the ASI air off in the off position, 
never unplug a, a cable because it's doing some procedures to shut down. And uh, I've heard of people damaging the unit by just turning it off and pulling cables out. So, uh, and it's a 12 volt input, five amp, 10 amp. Here is the so other how long side. How do you have to wait? Uh, 10 seconds. 10 seconds, okay. Yeah. Uh, you got the uh, ethernet ports here. These are your slow USB. So your camera, which does a lot of the heavy lifting, needs to be in, plugged into one of the blue ones. And if you're imaging to a USB stick, you also want that plugged into one of the blue ones because that it's like three times faster than these ports. And those are, those are time critical uh, devices. These are four power outlets on this side. And uh, each one of these is 12 volt out, 12 volt out and uh, up to three amps on all of these uh, outputs. And you can control focusers, uh, mounts and uh, cameras, you know, you cooling cameras need the extra power. However, uh, the whole unit itself is, it has a, a, like a six amp limitation. So if you're using three amps on this, power and three amps on that, then you can't use these two. So you're, and constantly, ahead. you're constantly recording to a USB, the, 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 the images you're taking, is that what it is? Yes, it's, it's, it's recording to a stick if you choose to do that, or if you put in one of these TF cards, Yeah, okay. it could record to that. And it also has an internal hard drive in here. So you have three options. Hmm. I, uh, for ease, I just put it in a USB stick. And say you're bringing this thing in for the night, uh, you can plug the USB-C. The only, the only purpose of this side is to get the data off the unit. Uh, this will plug into your laptop and have a, a very fast connection to transfer files. Or you can pull out the TF card. And of course, with Zoe, they're trying to get you to buy products. So they have a lot of accessories and only their focuser works with their product and only their filter wheel works. But the good news is they tend to be less expensive than others, and the quality is very, very good. So on my particular rig, this is my wide field rig here. I've got uh, the, the controller here, the, the, the ASI Air. I got a dewy heater hooked up to one of those power ports I just showed you on the last slide. This is the autofocuser. And here's a filter wheel. There's a guide camera. And there's the regular camera that is cooled. And all of these integrate into the app so you can control them very easily. And to use, to use this app for the first time, you would first turn it on. You're going to hear a beep in about 15, 20 seconds. And uh, the, a network will show up that you connect to. So you just connect to this network, and then you click on the ASI Air app, and you'll have a, a splash screen like this. And uh, new to ASI Air, uh, just November, this month of this year, you have a community tabs, and I don't know a whole lot about those. Uh, you, uh, you can follow people, you can explore features and, and just look at every, everybody else's astrophotography that uses this device. You can see anybody nearby. So I just clicked the button to test it. And I saw some people down in, near that, is that Sardis Lake, in Mississippi. And you can set up your profiles, similar to other social media. Uh, these are features I probably never use, but <laughs> I thought I'd show them to you. So here's the main screen, ASI Air, and you, then you enter the device. And you have a summary of everything. You really don't need to do anything here because all these features are already in the, uh, in the unit when you enter it, but uh, it lets you know you know, what camera's hooked up to everything. So, but I, I, I never even look at the screen. So here's what happens when you first come in. <clears throat> now, you have up here on the top, these are the settings for all the features. Uh, this is power ne uh, networking, the main camera, guide camera, mount, filter wheel, uh, focus, focuser, uh, USB sticks and you know wherever you're storing the data, uh, file management stuff, and some other specialty settings. 
uh, it's kind of it's designed for a phone so things are kind of tight so it said this says auto run because i chose auto run and i'll show you what that means pretty soon but when you click on this a sub menu pops up for all of your uh uh your, your workflow items like focusing and polar alignment uh and i'm going to show you some uh images of those pretty soon so we're in the main tab here called the uh the network tab but it's also the power tab and you see uh, that I have a, a camera plugged in and it's turned on and the mount plugged in turned on. They recommend that you have the mount on a separate power supply uh, because it draws a lot of amps when those motors are whizzing. But I've done a lot of testing and I feel confident that you can plug your mount into the ASI Air power because, uh, and the beauty of that is like when the system automatically shuts down at you know four or five in the morning before sunrise, It'll shut the mount down too, and the mount doesn't continue to track and maybe collide with uh, tripods. So that's why I do it. So when you have the power settings, <clears throat> I just showed you the camera and the mount, but they also have that you can choose a dew heater and plug it into one of these power strips down here. And you have control over how hot it is. So on normal nights, I have this at 60%. Uh, but if I feel like dew is coming, kicking in pretty big, I'll put it to 80 to make sure that that doesn't ruin the shot. So, so not only does it do the camera work, it actually controls dew heaters. Very powerful little feature. Are you going to cover Meridian flips some, somewhere in this? Yeah, it, I will. Okay. Okay. So we're still in Wi Fi networks and we have uh, two capabilities with five gig is much faster, but the range is terrible. It's like, you know, 10 meters and uh, 2.4 gigs. Uh, I can generally get to the backyard with that if I, if it's, but it's very slow and I don't like it. Uh, but you could also hook it up to your home network using station mode. But if you do that, you have to be at 2.4 gigs. So what I do at home is I hook up an ethernet wire to it and everything is very fast. And this is just connecting to a network, just, shows you how to do it it's just simple things like you know you can use celsius or fahrenheit i tend to keep everything celsius because that's how the astronomy that's that's the language they speak and uh if you you know when you're on here you can scroll up and down when you scroll down uh you have some other features a switch device is a, a good one because say you got a couple of asi air mounts going and you're taking pictures you don't need two cameras you can just look at set up a shot let it go and move over to uh, the si air to connect it to an other mount set it up and let it go and then just kind of monitor them back and forth it gives you that option now we're moving on to the main camera settings uh, and this what comes in here what comes in this, these settings are what your camera's capable of so if i hooked up a dslr camera to this thing, which you can do. There's quite a few that are compatible, like Canons and Icons. Uh, you, uh, this cooling wouldn't show up. So what, what, what the your capabilities that show up in these menu settings are what your camera can do. So I've got a cooling camera. I usually set that to minus ten degrees to reduce noise. And uh, uh, here's a, a pro tip for the first time you. Like say you got a, a train going for the first time, uh, you know you're, you you want to go to wide field. I, I took my put my sixty one millimeter on there. You don't want to, uh, even though you know the focal length, you don't want to put it in there. You want to put zero there, and then when you do your first plate solve, it's going to enter all that information for you. That way, uh, it, it can focus and do everything better. And then uh, you would scroll this down to see some more features of the camera, such as you can turn on anti do because my camera has that capability. Uh, custom file names, let me just show you, like file names are to help you manage stuff. They're, they're very powerful. You can put the camera model on there, uh, the gain, uh, the temperature of, of uh, when you took the shot, that's the temperature of when that shot was taken. And uh, so just little things to help you keep organized. And there's a few other features here. I'm, I'm not going to cover everything. I just want to get, like I said, this is a 20,000 foot view. I just want to give you a feel for what this thing can do. 
but they they do have a new feature where you can turn anti do on so when you turn on the camera the the do comes on which is comes in handy because i've had some foggy images <laughs> uh show up because I, I forgot to turn that on and now uh the guide scope settings so the so you uh you you would choose this main area here uh, and you choose the guide scope and then you turn it on but unfortunately with the guide scope you have to know the focal length of your guide scope and enter it in this field here and uh and then you th these are like calibration steps when you're when you're you, you go everybody's done phd uh two this is the same principle this number here is going to change quite a bit based on what focal length you put in uh you know you can lower that quite a bit if you're off axis guiding or you might you might need to raise it if you don't have a lot of focal width on your uh, focal length on your guide scope. So this, I'm just alerting to everybody getting into this. This is this is not a default number. You're going to have to know what to do here. So, um, Steve, so do we have to calculate that number? Or you do because uh, you have to type. What you do is you type in that number, and they there's some guidelines I can give you. Matter of fact, if 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 we're interested, that sh this could be a future talk because. Uh, I can tell you this, uh, I go to their bulletin boards and their Facebook pages all the time and guiding is the number one problem people have uh, because they have a PhD dumbed down version Yeah, and uh, you don't have some of those features, so you have to play around. Do you have the guiding system from the PhD too? No. Oh. No guiding yeah. assistance. So, but uh, I've talked to Graybeards about that, and they say they welcome this because there's only like two settings that they have to wor really worry about, and calibration step is one of them. And uh, as you know, and Merrill, uh, you've done some PhD as well. There's you want you want when it's doing the uh, oh you probably haven't with your mouth <laughs> you're, if you're tracking. I, uh, I use well. I before I got to this latest system, I use uh, Maxim DL, which is similar process. You go through a calibration step. Yeah. So uh, with what, what what I've learned with this is you want to do about four steps when when it does the north south uh, east west four or five. So if you're doing less than that, uh, your guiding is not going to be as good. And uh, if you uh, put too much in, you're doing like twenty steps. Uh, it's you're wasting a lot of time and it, it won't improve your guiding at all. So this is a, a number you're just going to have to, you, uh, you're going to, you have to blow a night of imaging uh, to figure out what to put there. Now, these two things, these are default PhD settings. I've never messed with them. And let's see, I'm not going to get into a lot of the minutia of the ability settings, but you can see you have the stability settings and settle times and timeouts uh, if you're having problems. And, uh, you know, we can, we should probably do a guide talk, uh, Meryl. That should be one of your future agenda items, okay. both with B PhD2 and uh, USIR. Uh, and uh, this is an exciting new feature for me because how many people here have? have uh, turned on their guide camera and calibrated and did all these steps. And it turns out that uh, PhD thinks it's that hot pixel is a star. <laughs> it's happened to me twice. So uh, it, it just, it guides to a pixel, a hot pixel on your, your camera and uh, your, your target moves off the screen. So they, you can build a dark library now for your guide camera. So this is not for your main, for, for your guide camera. And when you turn that on, you're not gonna, it's not gonna focus on a hot pixel and do an improper guiding. And uh, dithering, uh, you, uh, you got this concept called walking noise and dithering really helps prevent it. And uh, I tend to, when you have a good camera, like a Zoe camera or, or you know, uh, QHC or any, you don't need, to do a lot of you, one or two pixels is fine for movement, but if you have a DSLR, you have to be five, ten, or even thirty to, to stop your problems. And a lot of people are using the Zoe ASI Air with their 
uh, DSLR cameras. So that that's why they put the, these these there. Interval, you know, I I I have it dither every other shot. It's your your choice. Some people do their every shot. Some do every every five shots. Uh, now we're at the telescope control. Now this is one of their weaknesses. Uh, the, the problem with is Zoe didn't de develop the APIs for all these mounts, and there's a lot of different mounts doing different things. So there's there's been a lot of problems here. You know, you choose your mount and you lose connection, and you have to reboot the mount. So it's kind of frustrating for a lot of people, and you you kind of learn what causes it eventually. Uh, but there's uh, so it's, it's an imperfect system when it comes to mounts, but you eventually get it. So I, there's there's hundreds of mounts you could choose from. This is the one I was using that night. Uh, it puts in the proper baud rate to because uh, that that they publish those numbers, so mount manufacturers. And uh, this shows you where the telescope's pointing, right ascension, declination, all that stuff. And then you you can scroll this down. You'll see more so settings. What is the problem it's having? Is that it doesn't stay connected or? Yes. So uh, it's, it's you know, Zoe cannot figure out, you know, 550 mounts perfectly. So uh, you, you, if the, 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 they communicate back and forth, and sometimes some communication doesn't pop in, and uh, their app isn't picking up some data, or the mount isn't sending proper data to it. Uh, so it, you, you get used to it, and then uh, I frankly, uh, after about 15 sessions, I haven't seen the problem. But uh, it's like a headache you, you got to deal with initially. And uh, interesting, they put some of these center exposure times uh, for your guiding on your mount system and uh, your guiding rate you get to choose. Uh, again, uh, this this guiding right here is showing up because my, my Optron mount supports it. If you hook up a Celestron mount to this, this does not show up. They do not let you get direct access to your guiding rate. You have to use other methodologies, which I'll show you one way to do it. And uh, here's the Meridian flip settings. So on the exposure time, can you actually set a different number than those values? Well, these exposure times are just for guiding. Uh, your guide, uh, so, uh, yeah, no, this, these are all, okay. uh, and you know, um, if there's good seeing, you're gonna be right here around the two and the five, if it's decent seeing. But uh, if, if uh, I was clearly having a bad night <laughs> guiding. So okay. uh, That's, wow. So I, I went pretty extreme there. Uh, I'm usually right here at five or two. Okay. So well, I it, had picks that, okay. Yeah. it picks that because of what your telescope can do. Or, right. Mm -hmm. to okay. Yeah. And uh, the, the default guiding rate on is 0.5 everywhere, but I did some testing and uh, for the Ioptron mount I have, 0.75 is the best way to go. No, 0.75 of side reel rate? What? Yes. Okay. Exactly right. Huh. So, and then let's see. This is the Meridian flip setting here, and, and the mount is just designed to protect the mount. Uh, so th these numbers here are like uh, if you got a very long telescope, like a, a reflector, uh, I mean a refractor that's you know four feet long, and it might collide with tripods. You, you know when you're doing a Meridian flip, you're pointing pretty much straight up, and uh, if you put uh, some numbers here, uh, like thirty. There won't be any collisions. So just to wait, uh, I, I just chose five. You can, uh, if, if you have a short rib like mine, you, you can put zero there. Okay, so so it uh, after it flips, you do another plate solve? You don't do anything. It does it all for you. Okay, it plate solves. It does yeah. a plate solve. Yeah, and, and uh, it does a plate solve, and then, and then it resets up your tracking. It hope, hopefully finds a, a guide star in the new arrangement right if you're in a dark area you might have problems but i've never 
had trouble finding a guide star. Well, with it, you got a 288 focal length. That's you know, <laughs> yeah, lots of stars. If you have if you have a real long focal length, it'll be different, right? Or it could be different. So, yeah. So Marilyn, if you, have, if you have an OAG, it may be better if you don't. You know, if if you if you're experimenting with this thing and it does the flip and it can't find the stars, you might put a wider guide scope on it. Mm -hmm. uh, then it'll probably connect better. But I, I have an OAG and I've never had trouble. It just flips and guides. Okay. And uh, this little button here just puts it to the zero position, but you know, points at Polaris again. And uh, let's see. So yeah, when you turn on tracking, you choose sidereal, solar, lunar, just depending what you want to image. When you're doing, when you're imaging solar or lunar, you're generally doing video, anyways. And now we're on to the uh, filter wheel, wheel settings, and there's really nothing special here. Uh, you can get to choose your filter, and uh, NF is no filter, uh, and you can get a five or they, they sell five or seven position filters. Uh, I think yes. Well, you you uh, left the mount. Do you, how, where, you didn't cover uh, polar alignment. Is that well? That's uh, that's got, I'm uh, I'm doing settings first. Uh, which were these these right here. Then I'm going to go through workflow, and I'll show you how you pull okay. it on. Okay. I actually have video on that because it's kind of an important concept. Okay, cool. Yeah. And uh, the filterware, really no special settings here, except for this, these filter settings, which relate only if you have an automatic focuser installed. Uh, and uh, so here's the filters I have hooked up right now. I have the no filter. I got L Enhance and L Pro. They let you put four digits in because this is part of the naming system. So they didn't want you they also have those namings to get carried away. You could have, I could have kept them one, two, three, four. It didn't matter. Uh, but I want to show because uh, I'm, I also have an auto focuser that if I have no filter, I, I can get by doing good focusing with just two second exposures. But with that L enhance in there, you know, blocking the light, I got to do eight seconds, I found out. Uh, and uh, the L Pro, just a typical light pollution filter, I need to be at five to do a good focus. And this is me, my experience, just playing around, really. But by the way, the documentation at Zoe is next to worthless. <laughs> you, they, they're, they're, their manuals are a joke. They're two years old. Uh, they don't update them. And... Uh, that's why connecting with people on Facebook has been a lifesaver for me. So now we're on some focus, uh, autofocus settings. Uh, and uh, step size becomes important if you're having trouble. Uh, I know a guy who's got some long focal lengths, uh, like a, uh, he does, I think, 11 inch Celestron. And he, he needs more than 30 steps. He does like 40 or 50. So this is an experimental important number. I, I'm highlighting the numbers that are not, the, you know, you, you can keep most of this default. So I'm calling to your attention, that this won't be a default number. You're gonna figure, you're gonna have to figure that out for long focal lengths. The, the shorter, the less you put in here, the quicker your autofocus is gonna occur. Uh, and I, I, I can get, I've discovered I can get really good focus with, a, with my, both of my five inch uh, Explore Scientific and my 61 millimeter uh, William Optic. I can do, I, I can do 30 and I'm going to have perfect focus. It's amazing how the focus works. Is, I was actually part of their testing with this and I can tell you, I sent in a lot of, uh, I had a lot of problems with it when it came out. And in about four months, every problem was solved. Uh, there, does it create a V curve? Is that what it does? I'm gonna actually show you the V curve. It's kind of oh. interesting what it does. Okay, I'll just I'll just shut up then. No, I want these questions, Marilyn. It kind of helps. See, I, I'm them. just totally ignorant on this, so it's all it's yeah. It's all that's why that's why I'm first going through the settings just to show you this. This okay. shows our capability. All right. And here's some focuser settings. Uh, and for each. And for each filter, it has to do that uh, theoretically. Refocus. Right. Mm -hmm. like, and say you're going to use three filters in one night. Uh, you really have to have your act together on that on the, these settings, Alan, uh, because 
every filter change, as you guys know, is uh, uh, it really the focus is gone. Mm -hmm. uh, there's there's uh, at least on on everything that I have, and it's it's pretty far pretty far gone. <laughs> They're all pretty different. So you really got to test these out, and uh, I like the, there's like two or three nights of pain where you're not imaging anything, and this is when learning your focusing and learning your guiding are some of the hardest things to do, but everything else is just push a button. And uh, some really good features on the autofocuser. Uh, if there's a two degree change in uh, Celsius, uh, plus or minus, uh, usually your focus will go bad in that change of temperature. And this thing, if you turn this on, it's just gonna say, oh, okay, it got two degrees colder tonight, I'm gonna focus. And it just do automatically does it. You don't have to be around for it. And it's never failed me. The, the, so it has uh, a built-in temperature uh, sensor. I yeah. So I didn't see the sensor. The sensor is, is uh, when you install the uh, focuser on, onto, your, onto the, the regular focus knob, yeah, you, you're grabbing the pin. You're pulling yeah. something off, and that pin is there. Yeah. And it has the temperature inside of your telescope. So this is the uh, sensor from your uh, autofocuser, right? Yeah, it's the temperature actually of the the telescope itself inside uh, because it's it's touching the metal uh, pin coming out of the focuser, uh -huh. and and it, so it's really getting the the ambient temperature inside of your your uh, the the, fo the the focus area too. It's really nice, and uh, that and that's what that's that's the that's where you want it to be because that's the temperature inside your telescope is very important. Uh, you can uh, change your focus every hour, two hours. I've never turned that on, but I always do an autofocus if there's a filter change. And uh, let's see, these settings are just like they, th these zones come with a, a clicker <laughs> that you can just focus manually. And uh, these make them finer, of course. Uh, like if I put 20 in there, it'll focus, it'll go there quicker. But uh, it won't be, it won't, you won't be able to get the, you can't control the focus, the fine focus as well. So just, just some settings you play with. I've never even touched this because the, the autofocuser works. Why do it? And uh, we're down here among the settings to the, uh, uh, the memory stick. And I, and I, Mary and I were talking early on, there's an internal hard drive and an SD card and you, and I hooked a USB stick up. And uh, it used to be you would click on image management and go to an image, and then you can like stack it if it's a video, or if it's a bunch of images, you can do deep sky deep sky stacking and see it right there without any processing, and it gives you really good images. So it lets you know how you're doing as you're moving along. Uh, uh, this used to be now, so they just this is brand new that they put this out here. Uh, right away when you click on the, the file manager. You're, you're seeing this on your laptop or your your iPhone? Or both? Yeah, you're, you're only seeing it on your phone. These things, this thing doesn't work on a laptop well, at I, all. Oh, I thought you just had a connection to your laptop. Is that just downloading the, the data? Yeah, oh, okay. uh, I, I should, I, yeah, I probably did say that. I meant to say uh, connection to these files that are on the ASI Air. Okay. That, that's what it's grabbing. And it works for iPad as well? Yes, and okay. Android. Okay. Uh, and a lot of people buy these Android emulators for their laptops. And uh, to me, that's kind of stupid because the ASI Air is not as powerful as PC solutions. It is just designed to be a portable, easy to use, easy to get into hobby. Uh, and that's, what, that's why uh, the, it's selling like hotcakes. I talked to... Uh, mm -hmm. uh, 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 What's the name of that company? High Point. Uh, and uh, I said, you know, how is this ASI Air? He says, we order 10,000 and they're gone the next day. <laughs> he says, it's unbelievable. I mean, uh, everybody's, because, you know, the price point's not real bad. It's 300 bucks and it controls uh, your camera and everything. But they can't even keep them in stock. And uh, this last thing, you, you'll set them use. I use it to send bug reports. Uh, and uh, there's some experimental features I want to tell you about that are pretty cool. And I'll just show you those real quick. Uh, 
I'm showing this screen because uh, I'm helping a lot of people in our community out on Slack with uh, problems they're having. They're asking me questions. And uh, I'm really not a super expert. These guys are. And, that, and I'm in regular contact with about seven of these people. When I have problems, I drop a note on uh, Facebook. And one of these guys has answers. It's really quite spectacular. I don't think they get paid. You know, most of these people just do it for the hobby. They love the hobby and they like this unit. But there's some really good photographers that are part of this. You know, Peter Zelenka and Tim Connolly are, are really good photographers. There's a bunch of them here. And these are the two. So when, when ASI Air is not, they don't think something's ready for prime time, they stick it over here in experimental features so people won't yell at them when it doesn't work. But uh, uh, I was I was with Mylon the other day and he was having trouble plate solving and I was telling him about this. Uh, when you're not getting enough stars for plate solving, you can come in here, turn this on, and it helps with lower light conditions or if you're not getting as many stars, maybe this will solve his problems. And uh, this, this one up here is all sky polar line. My neighbor's tree is about ready to cut off Polaris. <laughs> It's growing pretty fast and I won't see it pretty soon. So I was excited about this feature and I've tried it three times and uh, I, uh, uh, it allows you to plate solve anywhere in the sky, polar line. You just kind of point north with your mount and it tells you to go to this region of the sky, then go to that region of the sky and you turn your knobs and uh, it does a really good job. I, I've been really happy with that. So when I lose Polaris, I'm not gonna freak out. <laughs> How close does it get to the, the pole? Uh, a few arc it, seconds or? Uh, it, uh, two, they, they want the error to be less than two arc minutes. Arc minutes, okay. Yeah, and then they feel like you have a good polar okay. alignment. Okay. And uh, let's see, now we're, we're now we're going to the workflow and the, uh, so we're done with all these settings and uh, the first workflow is you got to focus and you can do it manually with this button and you can uh, move this to a star and it, it gets FWH full width, FWHM data, star size data. And you really don't need a, uh, one of those focus masks. You can, you can look at numbers that are popping in here with, and just dial the focuser and you're there. You get really good focus. Uh, but when you have it, I'm going to show you an autofocus routine. Uh, so uh, you click on the focuser here, and this screen pops up, and then you click on AF for autofocus. And this shows you the V curves, as you can see. I sped this up four times. This is the, the distance from the camera, the focus distance from the camera, and these are star sizes on this axis. You can see that it's calculating a V curve right now. And then when it's done calculating the V curve based on star sizes, and uh, it's going to... Uh, find the focus point, which it's doing right now. And this is it's four times slower than this, but the, uh, I want to move this along. And then it finds your focus position. And then when you find the focus position, you would choose, uh, uh, let's go to the next one here. You would choose, oh, right, now it's time to, it looks like it's time to pull her line. And here's a polar line arrow. So the unit is, is pointing north, and this represents your telescope. And it's going to do an initial plate solve from wherever you put it. And you need to be uh, within five degrees of Polaris for this to work, so for, for the first plate solve. And when it, when a plate solves, so it's, it's shooting Polaris right now. When a plate solved, it, uh, it sends a signal to your mount and uh, it turns this thing 60 degrees automatically. So uh, uh, I'm gonna show, so this represents what your mount's doing. My mount is actually doing that as well. And then it takes the second shot. So it uses that information of uh, the shot near Polaris and the 60 degree turn to get proper polar alignment. And uh, we are 
I guess based on what you said earlier that uh, with about the tree, so as long as you can see Polaris, you don't have to see the stars under, under right. it or lower than it. Yeah, so you, it's, which is quite nice. You, if you're, you don't have to be, you don't even have to point it at Polaris. I never have. I, I don't spend a lot of time in this process. I point it northish, <laughs> where I think Polaris will be. I don't spend a lot of time. I don't get out my compass. Okay. Uh, I just point it northish, and because I trust the system, and it does a good job. So I, I we have we have one plate solved, and then we have the second plate solved at the sixty degree turn, and now it's it's manually turning dials, right at your mount. And uh, I'm going to give you a pro tip. You never look at this. This is a, like a cool little bubble target grid that they have. You look over here. Uh, you, you, you have left and right arrows and up and down arrows. And it shows you how far you're off. So I'm going to uh, hit play again. So these, so this, I need to go down with my mouth. So I, I'm twisting it, making the, the, it go down. I'm making it go to the right. And I'm doing this manually. And it's getting closer. Uh, uh, we're trying to get to uh, two arc minutes or better. And I'm just... Just this is sped up four times, so this is me just turning knobs, and it's it's automatically taking all these images. So I'm in 16 error right now, 14, 13, and finally I'm within two, and then they give you a smiley face, and then they do this stupid little <laughs> global ranking, the same you did it, you pull their line. And this particular day, I did 67% better than everybody else. <laughs> and then once you get polar line, you start. It's time to uh, plate solve where you are and where your, your, your scope is going. And I've, I've watched a couple of those vi other videos on polar alignment. Mm -hmm. And nobody has had that little automatic thing check, the, check in the bottom. Uh, you got so, it hitting me. So the, the automatic checkbox that it keeps taking new photos. Yeah. Based on uh, how many seconds you have. Uh, I, I to me I can't live without that. I mean uh yeah, that little auto. Let me, let me hit pause. So yeah, uh, I guess I guess they keep on keep on hitting the refresh button if the auto isn't checked. Yeah. But then you got you got to be the one doing the work. No. <laughs> right, right. I hit auto right. and I, I can't see over here on the right side. How many seconds? Probably two second exposures. Uh, is that what I have over here on the right? Yeah. Yes. Two seconds. Okay. Yeah. So. Uh, so okay. I just hit auto. Okay. Let it yeah. work for yeah, me. Makes sense. And uh, it, it takes me you know, on average two minutes to get a really good polar line. So it's not a really quick process with plate solving. And guiding is the single most difficult thing with this because uh, it's not very intuitive <laughs> and uh, they, they don't give you as many features as regular PhD. But to turn on guiding, you hit this button here and then you have to click anywhere in this chart, which to me is not too intuitive at all. When you click on this chart, you come to this area, this section, and you have this, this area here resets guide guide. This allows you to just start taking pictures, continuous pictures. And this you and the, here's what why the old gray beards like this. You push once you push these two buttons and you got your guide scope focus, you push this button and uh, it's going to do the calibration steps and then it's going to start guiding. And you're generally done at that point. Yeah. Uh, once you've learned your guiding, you, there's not a lot of tweaking necessary unless you got some significant seeing differences. Okay. And just to let me know, so you do not have guiding or track tracking on when you're polar aligning, correct? It's just you can. It doesn't hurt, but I, I, I it, usually uh, it turns on automatically with ASI Air when you take your first image and plate solve it. Then it knows. Okay, he means business. Okay, so it doesn't yeah. matter. Uh, so it really doesn't matter. Uh, and th this is uh, multi-star guiding, as you can see. So I, I hit the button and it's grabbing all these stars. And uh, I already told you about the calibration step, how this is going to change depending on your focal length. 
and some center exposure time and guide rate. So what I did was uh, on the suggestion of one of those people that I showed you, you know, that screen that ASI are recognizing these great people who help with the community. Uh, I, I, Alan, I put these on these, I put these on 50% and then I, I just did a simple guide session, that's one screen. And I looked at my error down here, you know, it might've been 1.2. Then I tried 0.7, you know, I first tried 0.5, then I did 0.75, did the same thing. That 1.2 probably dropped to, you know, 0.7. And then I realized, okay, I got a 0.75 mount. And, and then, uh, that, so that's how that works. And uh, I was telling you that different telescopes, telescopes do different things. I have an AVX Celestron mount that I bought used from somebody and I, I've actually used it for ASI air and I couldn't get the thing to work to guide with a darn. And then I realized because I had 64 rate, there's no way it's going to guide or track because that's, that, that's the, that's what they use for tracking. So you got, you can click on this right here and put it on, you know, 0.5 or 0.75 and it'll be fine. So just because, because of different APIs, you have to do different things. And uh, I think uh, this is a video of a uh, of a calibration step that I'll show. This will be just a couple seconds. Oh, that was nice. Uh, it, it warns you. Go back to that slide. I just noticed. I just noticed this during the. It warned me that uh, I was pointing at a region of the sky. That is not a good region to set up a calibration, a guide calibration. So they, they, they for accurate results, they told me to move it to uh, minus thirty to plus thirty. And the declination. So this guide here was would not be what they would recommend. I was de definitely out of the zone. And uh, you can watch the guide stars do steps, and, and that, see how there's four steps, four or five steps, and you're good. Uh, need less, and you you got to enter that different numbers. So th there's a little there's a little pain point there that you have to get through first. Okay, and then uh, the next part of the workflow is go to or plate solve. Uh, and uh, there's two ways to do that. Let's just this is your telescope control, and you can click on this search button right here and you can see uh, or you can click on the sky map sky map is uh, very visual you can just like uh, using uh, sky safari you can just dr drag your finger and go to an object and click on it it'll center on, uh, automatically or you can select from a list a uh, lot similar to this. And these are the objects in the sky. It shows you how high, high it is in the sky at that point. So it gives you indications if it's a good target. And I'm going to show an example of a uh, sky map later. You can click on that. And uh, yeah, this is a powerful feature a lot of people don't know about. Uh, say I took, you know, 50 images of the heart nebula. I had a frame exactly how I wanted it. Uh, uh, at the first night, then the next night, I don't have to do any of these go-to routines. I can literally click on this button right here and choose any one of those images and, and tell the telescope just by hitting one button to go there and, and align perfectly where you were the previous night. It's a very powerful feature. And I'm, I'm surprised when I'm on Facebook how few people use it. Including the polar alignment? Are you, are so you still you still have to get a proper polar alignment okay. so every session, but this thing when you got every when your guy you, when you got everything set up, it's just nice to have one button to get you there. Okay, uh, it's great for multi night sessions. And this is the we're into planning now, uh, moving on down. And this is where you enter. Okay, I'm going to take 15 shots with no filter, 180 seconds. And then I'm gonna take
take 60 shots with the low pro filter. All these on, on bin one. And then uh, 180 seconds for the L enhance. And uh, the information you put in here changes your times here, which is very nice. So uh, it's telling me that I've got just over four hours of shots based on my plan. And it also tells me that my target, the, Merid the Meridian flip is going to happen in five hours. So I don't have to worry about it. <laughs> so if this said two, I would say, okay, I got to make sure there's a flip that's going to occur and I got to make sure everything, like nothing is going to collide. All right. Does that also account for like you're focusing every two or not focusing every two frames? But, uh, it, 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 it does not, uh, uh, but it doesn't knock you off too bad on the timing. The focusing okay. just takes like two minutes max. Or I uh, guess I was thinking dithering, not focusing, but uh, yeah. Yeah, it, it does. It takes an account dithering. Okay. Uh, it assumes you're going to get back in like three to five seconds. And so it, it puts all that in the timing. Okay. And uh, you, go ahead. Yeah. So you got, uh, you, you choose lights, you choose exposure filter. This, and you don't, uh, I, I, um, Devin one day told me he couldn't get a certain amount. He wanted a, a fractional amount in the exposure. If you click here, you can put any amount in. You can put one, 1. 1.75 exposure but when you do when you click here in this area it's it's just typical one minute three minute five minute exposures 10 minute exposures that you just select because that, that's what most people do then how, long does it take to to how long does it take to download an image once you once you take it uh is well it, it it really the beauty of it is it, it really doesn't matter it's going to save the image it takes about on my camera, uh, uh, which is an ASPC chip, it's not a full frame. Uh, it, it's saved in in like two to three seconds to the to the USB drive. It's very fast. Very fast. Uh, if I plug, uh, and I, I'm surprised how many people don't know about that blue. I showed you the blue USB port. Those are the fast ones. So, so if you plug the camera into a non-blue, three times slower. It's just fascinating. And these last two uh, uh, items in the workflow are, are not used by too many people. This is, most people use Deep Sky. Live stacking, I actually, um, Alan saw me use this thing at uh, uh, when we were at uh, Village Creek Star Party. Uh, I, I live stacked uh, a couple of galaxies and it did a really good job. And I've never used a feature before. I just tried it this night and it's just one button. I hit one button. Uh, called live and, and then I hit that and, and it just just start stacking. Matter of fact, uh, I think I got here's a video that I did real quick. So when you when you hit the live stack button, you get to choose how long so so I, I did one minutes, then it just uh starts stacking. You don't see anything till after the second exposure. So there was a there was a like a two minute wait and I was on the heart nebula that right here. And say so, so then now it's starting to come to so each stack that's going to get clearer and clearer. So a, a lot of people I hear are using this for uh, outreach. Yeah, that's pretty neat. Yeah, and uh, uh, I'm showing you kind of a workflow of the video, and I have a 300 millimeter focal length telescope, and you. you you want to be at around 2000 when you're shooting videos of planets. But um, I wanted to demonstrate two things here. This, this sky map and uh, go to, and then, uh, then capturing video uh, with planets. So, and this is not what, I, what I'm, it's not a spectacular thing I'm showing you. You want more focal length. It, it gives you the, the flow. So you hit sky map and I was at the heart nebula. I'm zooming out on the on the iPhone and uh, moving over and looking for Jupiter and I'm gonna zoom in there. And when I get in there and I center it, I'm gonna hit a go to button, which will be right down here. And the telescope right now is actually moving over to Jupiter. And it's plate solving and making sure it's in there and then there it is right in the center. And then I can choose a uh, uh, video. I can hear I can choose video. And I'm recording video right now. 
I'm going to zoom ahead here. And then when you're done recording the video, you can choose plant. If, if you choose them, if you did the moon, you just choose lunar surface or planetary. It'll actually stack it for you right there in the software. Could we get everybody to mute except the, this people person speaking? We got a couple of them that are, un, that are open. Please. There's one. Janet is the other one. There we go. You think it's Janet? Okay, I just moved it. Can everybody hear me? Meryl, can you hear me? Yes. Yes, we can hear you. Okay, good. So uh, Janet, uh, it was, yeah, there was some feedback from her, so I just solved that. Okay. All right. Let me get back here. All right, can you see the presentation now? Yes. Excellent. So, uh, so that uh, th this was good. I, I, I highly recommend everybody go to one of our outreach events and just hang around Milan because he's doing this planetary stuff spectacularly. He has a perfect scope for it and a perfect uh, camera. And uh, he and I were out at uh, 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 Village Creek Star Party, and he shot Jupiter, and he, we only took like a forty. I'd say 40 second video of it. And we saw crystal clear the red spot and all the banding. So it's really powerful uh, if you do it correctly. And, and I think he posted that on the Memphis Astro Facebook page. I asked him to do that. I'm glad I haven't checked yet. I'm glad yeah. he did. Because he tried to do, uh, I think it was Uranus. It didn't come out too well. And the the mm -hmm. move that came out good. Yeah, I hope you did the the Jupiter one had the red spot. It was great. And I, I this is the the last couple of slides, and I saved the best for last because this is the new feature that's really getting a lot of buzz, and it's mosaics. And Merrill, uh, one of our future talks will need to be doing mosaics with uh, PixInsight because <laughs> I've never done it, and I I need to learn on that one. If anybody's ever done any mosaics, that's great. I, I think I know Devin did one that was really good. Okay, um, I've used it before. It's just not one of my favorite things. It, yeah, uh, I think uh, one of the reasons why a lot of people haven't used it is it's very hard to do. It's it's hard to do, and if you really want to get lots and lots of detail, it means lots and lots of time and exposure. So you may be. Yikes! To get a get a big screen, I mean a big sky image, maybe take days and days and days of imaging. It would, but yeah. May, you know, maybe worth it. I, one of these days, I like to get Bernard's loop, and that's that is a <laughs> huge amount of sky. That with would, with, with, you, with your with your current rig. Well, yeah, that would take forever. Would you or would you go wider? <laughs> Uh, it, well, you, uh, yeah, I got to do wider. Somebody else, I mean, Canmore smiling. <laughs> so, uh, what, what do you guys do it? You have, a, you have a baby queue too. You can use that. Yeah, well, I, it's a big, big deal to uh, put it back in service. It's, it's my counterweights what it's doing now. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Okay, so I'm going to throw two quick videos, and this is one that uh, uh, I was actually part of this testing. And it came out of the bot box ready to go. I was really impressed with this. Uh, and uh, the, what you do is you, we, we showed you the sky map, which is a nice way to pinch and zoom to get your targets. This is the only way you can do mosaics, but it wasn't intuitive. Like I said, they don't give you any documentation. They say download the app and figure it out. Uh, and, and so I'm going to give you like, the, I figured out it's not intuitive, so I figured out a way to do it. And uh, so... Here's the first video I'm, I'm going to do, uh, and I want you when I when you see the video, I want you to notice that you just put your finger here and you go right and left, and it, it adds tiles. Uh, 
X and Y, and then you can increase overlap. And let's let's just just show you. Uh, uh, I'm looks that, that looks like a heart and soul, or is that north? yeah? And uh, I'm just I'm just moving this thing in and out, and this this is real time. I'm not speeding it up. And you have a plan uh, of this grid system. You can add more overlap or less, and uh, then then these become individual target plans. You can set exposures and filters and just start going after it. So uh, now I'm gonna show you like uh, the procedure that I've, I've struggled with, but now I, uh, maybe I can make, if somebody wants to do this, I can make it easier on them. And the first is you, you're gonna choose mosaics, but down here, there's an add to plan that pops up when you're done playing around, I'll show you. Uh, I'm moving. It looks like I'm going to get heart and soul. So all I did was just turn on mosaics and these automatically popped in based on my center point that I chose right here. So no thinking, just it just did it. And then uh, I can't see the right side of my screen. So I'm going to ask you guys. Uh, do you see uh, something over here? Watch over here when I hit play for a plan to show up. Is it? Let me show, let me know what it shows up there. It just showed up. So when I when I let go of these, that that sh this plan shows up. Oops, went ahead. Okay, so I have my, I have, you go ahead. So if it it sets up that plan, but I notice it's not it's not. I just want to say perpendicular or, or like looks like like looks like you have to rotate your camera. So that's something you have to rotate manually to get it to fit. No, that, no. It, it's doing the pan, plan based on uh, your current angle of Bring attack. Oh, okay. Yeah. I'm gonna, let me go to the last slide here. So I just, I just, just in this case, I, I just put it like in the middle of heart and soul. I turned on the mosaic and it, it automatically gave me the, this tile system with this overlap. And then I choose the plan button and it built this. It's just, it's giving you an indicator that these are going, and I showed you earlier the plan area where you get to enter exposures and you get to choose filters. It tells you how many hours of imaging you're going to do. It tells you when the meridian flips occur. Uh, so, so when you're done here, in this is very visual area of mosaics, you would go back to that plan area. You would, and uh, there's a button up here. I can't see the button, but uh, yeah, right here brings you back to your regular screens, and you can choose the plan, which I'm doing right here. When you hit plan, these pop up and you just get to put in your filters and your exposure times for each one. So I'm trying to get all this in one night, which is not recommended. <laughs> Meryl likes to have a lot of time on images and he's right. <laughs> yeah, I think 20 hours per image is about minimum. Yeah, and, and the ASI can it <laughs> save the plan also for a different night. Yeah, there's the beauty of it. And uh, let, let's say, okay, I only want to deal with you know 500 images of this one, or you know whatever you can do. You would just check check this box, Alan, and just leave these alone, and they'll they'll still be there, and you can go get them another night. So I mean, your plan. I set up that four tile plan. Here's the plan for all four tiles, and you get to choose. Uh, I'm gonna. I actually, I, I just checked them. And uh, when you're done checking it, it gives you options to, you know, to continue guiding, to turn off the cooler when it's done, shut down the SI air when it's done. Uh, so if you're on battery, that, that that comes in handy. And then to start the plan, you just hit this button over here. And it's just going to, it's going to, that's slowing to the first target, uh, that first grid. 
this plate solving, make sure it's perfectly centered on it. And, uh, and then when it's centered, it's going to take its first image. And because I got, I, I did my guiding in a bad day, that's a really bad guiding at three. <laughs> yeah, can walks. <laughs> I admit it. And uh, it's going to, you're going to see your first image. You get to see your progress. And there, there's the first tile, the first image of the first tile. So uh, that's, that's pretty much the overview of what this thing can do. And uh, uh, if anybody's interested in like really getting into the meat, the three things that people have trouble with when I'm on Facebook, and I help a lot of people out on Facebook because I'm kind of paying it forward. A lot of people help me out. Uh, if it's valuable for anybody to have just an AS, and it doesn't have to be our regular meetings. Like if Alan, Alan, I just got this, Alan tells me I just bought this thing and I'm not guiding right, we can set up a, a Zoom call. Uh, and we could have, you know, so if it's a valuable to have this discussion for the regular group, that's fine as well. You know, that's up to Merrill on guiding with this thing, on mosaics, how to do mosaics, and how to do focus. Those are the three areas that are, that, take the longest to learn on this device well i think it's fascinating because these are just basics for any telescope mm -hmm. i mean what you're doing is just fundamentals right <clears throat> and they what, what they did different is they, they made it part of the phone rather than the pc right right and your pc doesn't have to be connected to do star guiding or anything it it's doing all that for you that's pretty amazing mm -hmm. yeah for a little box of it's under 300 bucks. It's not bad. <laughs> of course, all, all this data that you're accumulating, the Chinese know what you're doing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you uh, if, you, uh, uh, if you're not, I know how to use proxy servers and all that. So when it's in, when it's in, in my backyard, you're not getting anything out of me. <laughs> well, you, you showed that one map with everybody that was. Uh... Uh, you have to opt in. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. You know, Apple. That's what they tell you anyway. Apple will <laughs> flat out throw them out of the store if they're not following those security protocols they have set up. And ah. they've done it many a time. Ah. Unless they're afraid of losing uh, Chinese business from the Communist Party over there, then, yeah. then they might want to slide. <laughs> uh, but if anybody has any questions or uh, comments, or if, uh, like if anybody's having trouble with the ASI Air, uh, we'll, we'll just open up a discussion. Who in the group has the ASI or besides Steve? Just Steve. Uh, well, uh, I know that uh, like Freddie has one. Oh. Rick has one. Uh, Devin has Devin uses his yeah. religiously. Yeah. Uh, and uh, a few I know I've talked to some of these other people. Uh, and I think they have it. I think they, I think even Janet might have one. And I was planning on getting one because it sure seemed like for a, a first try everything that would, it's all one box to to mess with. Right. What I like about it is I can go out to Burton's and get some good 3.5 bordal images, yeah. galaxies. Yeah. You know, you, you really don't worry about the light pollution for the nebula because you can filter out stuff very nicely. But uh, if you're going after galaxies, it's really nice to have this ability to and Keith Horde loves loves his he's uh he he's not coming out to Burton's he's excited about that and he's going to shoot some galaxies so there's about seven or eight of us in the group that have it this has been great any more questions any more questions for Steve no well, okay, it's we've been an hour and 15 minutes. Um, I guess I just want to <clears throat> close with <clears throat> talk about the future meeting, excuse me. <clears throat> uh, we're going to skip December um, and then January. Ken, where will you be ready for your? Okay. Yeah. He's going to give us a demonstration on the narrow band, how to take it and, and process it. Uh, so it's, that would be really a, a cool one to see. I'm looking forward to that because I don't know how, anything about it. No, well, yeah, I've not had any experience at it, or maybe very many. I haven't seen anything. <laughs> well, we we see your results, so we're kind of excited. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> so, what I what I did capture, you, you said suggested that we have a guiding with PhD as a topic in the future, and mosaics with PixInsight as a topic. Um, we also had 
I had written down that individual tools on Pix Insight. We could spend time on the ones that people would like to spend time on. So as we come up to that, I'll, I'll ask for input, which of the tools we want to put, maybe we'll get a half a dozen in a, in a meeting, how to take examples of how do we use them. And that would be the ones that people will use the most. So well, that, that'll be a future one. So we had, uh, we not, did you have something else? I'm sorry. I, I was just agreeing with that. That's oh, okay. Too good. Well, you, you see, we had nine live people tonight, which makes you wonder, do we, is this worth doing? And I think the answer is yes, because I, I asked Steve this to guess, uh, the rest of you guess how many people watched our last video? And I guess about 10. I did several times, actually. Oh. <laughs> I don't think it counts more than once, though. <laughs> we had 54 views of that which that was pretty amazing for our little group that people, people wherever they are, watched our video that we did. So, so I, it's more than just the nine people come, come live. Uh, it's, it's, we got, a, we got a broader reach. So, uh, which is kind of neat. This one, yeah, this, really one this one ought to be good too, for people to, if, if they search for other people in our group that aren't here tonight. So, anybody else have anything else? No? Okay. Great. Well, Steve, you did a fabulous job, and I really appreciate it. And we'll, um, yes. we'll, we'll okay, I'll, I'll close this recording off here momentarily, and it'll be up whenever Jeremy um, gets the time to do so. So, I'm I appreciate stop, it. Stop, stop recording.